Grade 6 math, number 9.6b, more integer multiplication. Okay, we talked about in 9.6a, multiplying a negative and a positive. Now we're going to talk about a negative and a negative, okay? And these are just introductory videos because we're going to really get into this deep in the next couple videos, okay? So this is just the beginning. All right, so it's negative times a negative. What's going on? Well, there's a thing called like signs, which are these up here. When you have two positives, it's going to equal a positive, and when you have two negatives, it's going to equal a positive, okay? So when we multiply two negative numbers together, it's going to be a positive answer. When we multiply a positive and a negative, or a negative and a positive, those are unlike signs, and we're always going to get a negative answer. Now don't worry, I'm going to explain to you why, all right? Let's take a look at this number line. It moves by threes. Here's the 0, and we do 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. It's the 3 times table, right? Well, it goes negative 3, negative 6, negative 9, negative 12, going this direction, right? In the negatives. So watch our times table. As we come down here, I want you to think of this row here, the number we're multiplying. I want you to think of it as the number line, okay? Because here's the 0. Here's positive 1, here's negative 1. Here's positive 2, here's negative 2. Here's positive 3, here's negative 3. So these, this second number we're multiplying is sort of like this number line, okay? All right, we've got negative 3 times 4. Well, we know from our last video that if we have a negative 3 four times, that's negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, and negative 3. So we have a negative 12 because we have four of them, okay? When we have a negative 3 three times, it's going to be a negative 9. We've got three negative 3s, see? When we have negative 3 two times, we have two negative 3s. We have a negative 3 plus a negative 3. That's a negative 6. When we have negative 3 one time, we just have one negative 3. When we have negative 3 zero times, we have zero. Now look at the answers. When we're multiplying by a positive, and these are negative, we're getting a negative answer, see? Because these are unlike. We've got a negative times a positive. But look what happens when we get to below, on the number line, below the 0, and we're now multiplying a negative 3 times a negative 1. Our answer is positive. So they're negative here, and they're becoming positive as we go down. See? Times 1 times 2 times 3. See? Times negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 3 times negative 4. See? And we can use a table or a pattern to show us what's happening as we multiply negative 3 by positive and negative numbers. See? So now the products are just like this number line. See? It's got 0 in the center, and it's got a negative 3 and a positive 3, and a negative 6 and a positive 6. So it's no different looking at this number line like this than if I were to turn the camera and we'd say 0, negative 3, positive 3, negative 6, positive 6. See? So... It's just like each side of the number line. And we can make this table with any number, negative number, to help us figure out what the product will be, OK? Well, when we multiply a negative with a negative, it makes a positive. But why? Why is that happening? Anytime we multiply numbers with the same sign, the product is positive. Positive 2 times positive 3 is positive 6. Those are like signs. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Those are like signs, and we get a positive answer. Okay, we said why, though, right? That doesn't tell us why. It just tells us what we're supposed to do. We want to really, really, really know why, okay? All right, Emma gave me money. That's pretty positive, right? If Emma gave you money, that would be a positive thing, right? Okay, Emma gave me no money. Well, that's kind of negative. That means I got zero. I got nothing, right? It's negative. Emma didn't give me no money. Think about that. If she didn't give me no money, this is positive. If she didn't give me no money, then she gave me some money. See? It's a double negative. It's like when people say, I ain't got no when people say I ain't got no, it means I got yes. Because if you don't have a no, then you must have a yes. See? Does that make sense to you? If you don't have a no, then it, you must have a yes. So anytime you hear someone say, I ain't got no, say, oh. So that means you do have it.
because you're doing a double negative. That means yes. That's a positive. All right. Are you still confused? Do you still not know why two positives make a negative? All right. Bob still owes Emma money from before when we were adding and subtracting the integers. All right. He owes her $40. And then he takes away one bit of the debt. She takes away one payment because he gives her five, she gives him he gives her $5. So now Bob owes Emma only 35. Well, the next week she takes away another part of the debt. Now it's minus two debt parts of the debt because he gives her another $5. And each week, she takes away a piece of the debt. $5, $5, $5. She's subtracting the $5 from what he owes because she's taking away a piece of the debt. And then after eight weeks, she's taken away eight pieces of the debt and he's given her $5. The $40 is paid. Take away the debt. Subtract it eight times at five dollars each time. That's a negative eight times a negative five, and that's a positive 40. Does that make sense? So hopefully between the money and the words, you understand that two negatives make a positive, okay? If I don't have no pi, then that means I have some pi, okay? Right? Right? All right, we're going to keep talking about multiplying integers. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.